Welcome back to X-Plane 11 and welcome back to the Saab 340. This is of course the leading edge simulations Saab 340, not the Carinado. I don't have direct experience with the Carinado version, but what I can say in general is that you would choose the LES Saab 340 because of, a more, because of it being a more complex aircraft whereas the Carinado is going to look better and that's a general observation with Carinado aircraft not having direct experience of it see I I like that I like the the look of it I don't really for example I, I have the Embraer 170 by SSG and it looks very crisp and very modern but it doesn't look worn it doesn't look used in the way that this modeling looks used can look at the overheads more directly you can see it just looks dirtier it looks like it's a uh, it's an aircraft that's had plenty of view of use I'm just looking at the views remembering which cue does what yeah while I'm down here okay so the potentiometers on this uh, throttle quadrant are a little bit dodgy so it, that's why you see a little bit of shaking so yeah that is or oh, this is the uh, LES Saab 340 what we're going to do today is we're going to start the aircraft it's a while since I started this aircraft I stopped flying it because it was impossible to do an air start with this aircraft. Now in my humble opinion every aircraft should be air start capable. But unfortunately a few developers seem to think that's very unrealistic and maybe it is in a sense but that's why it's a simulator and not the real thing. You should be able to start in the air you should be able to practice landings, you should be able to practice approaches and with this it's just not, or at least in the past it hasn't been possible and I doubt very much that it will, it will have been fixed what I'm going to do is I'm going to work through the startup I have, I have heard that it's there are issues with the startup so we are going to find out if that's the case today so as I look at my checklist, dome light as desired, it, it's daytime so I'm not going to need that and left and right AC gens on so where are we? left and right AC gens on I'm completely unfamiliar with this so I may get some things wrong left and right avionics off yeah, left and right avionics are off. Essential avionics off, indeed. Bus tie in auto. Yep, that is in auto. Left and right gens off. Now when I put this together, I try to make it as realistic as possible, looking at the Saab docks for the aircraft so you can skip some steps and do things differently I think this checklist is actually quite a bit different from the one that uh, leading edge put into the aircraft because there is a, uh, a checklist kind of built into the aircraft temperature control that's up here yeah that's, well actually it's quite a quite a warm day difficult to get these controls to sit where you want them to temperature select is automatic yep left and right batteries on left and right batteries are on let's just silence that Yep, 
Well, it should have silenced it. Why is it not? So, anyway, let's continue. So the following buses are now powered. Start bus, left and right generator buses, the left and right battery buses, left and right essential buses, and the emergency bus. So check that the left and right hot uh, battery hot lights are out. Yep, they're both out. And bus tie connection light is also out. Oh no, check that it's on actually. Let's get that right. Now if you want more, a more detailed explanation of what we're doing, look at the startup video I have for this aircraft. I'm sure we'll cancel that. I forget what, how exactly that's cancelled, but anyway. CWP check, that would be the warning panel. And everything's as I'd expect it to be on there. So that's perfectly fine. Left, oh, landing gear handle. Is that on the right? Yeah, a landing gear handle is down. I'm not going to check the landing gear lights for the purposes of this. Hydraulic pressure tr check. I think that's up here. But we're in the green. And that looks uh, correct. Want to check a little bit more. I think that's what is meant by hydraulic pressure. So that is in the green. Check outboard and inboard brake accumulator pressure to be with is within the green band. Is that? Outboard and inboard. I think that's these two. Inboard and outboard brake accumulator pressure. That's be okay. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's that's what we're looking at. Brake accumulator pressure. Both of them are in the green band, so that's correct. Essential avionics on. The essential avionic bus is now connected to the left essential bus. Main inverter on. I remember having difficulty finding where, yeah, there is main inverter. When I first started this aircraft, I could not find the main inverter switch. It's right there. 26 volt main inverter. Yep, there you go, ACLEC. Uh, cross valve is off. Let's remember where the cross valve is. it up here? I think it is. Cross valve uh, is off. Bleed valves reset auto. Bleeds are reset and back to auto. HP valves are closed. And again, I explained this to high pressure valves. I explained this in the startup video HP valves. Let's remember how this works. That's closed. <coughs> Prevents significant ITT rise at ground idle. Cabin signs on. I think these are down here. I'm not sure if we would be setting seatbelts on just yet but Fuel quantity, we're not worried about fuel quantity, but I uh, don't remember where fuel quantity is. It's one of these. Got fuel flow. Shift those on the bottom right of fuel. See, it's such a long time since I looked at this aircraft. But let's skip that for now because we don't really need to worry about it. But again, look at the uh, full video for more information on that. And for me finding out 
beacon on. So beacon is on. Hydraulic pump auto. Oh, let me remember where hydraulic pump. This is me finding things. What is hydraulic pump auto? This is what happens when you don't fly an aircraft for a long time. Is it down here? Hydraulics. Or is it... I think it might be on the... Yeah, I think it's it. Yeah. Hydraulic pump is on auto. Yeah. Cabin pressure is set. Is it up here? Again, I'm a little bit behind on this. I forget how to set the cabin pressure. Actually, yeah, it's, uh, it's down here, isn't it? I think. But yeah, we're not going to worry about that in this one. Because that's quite involved. And where are we for the radar and transponder? We want the transponder to stand by. I've got to remember where it is. Transponder at standby. There you go, it's down here. That's on standby. Radar is also on standby. Got a 10 mile range. If I could remember how to get it, there you go, that's 25 miles. Okay, so that's before engine start. Now starting engines. Power levers at ground idle. That's the switch I was looking for, or the button I was looking for. It was just uh, not in that view. Okay, power levers are at ground idle. Just with this aircraft, actually, it's important to oh, make sure to make sure that always gets me. That actually. It's always important, I'll give you one tip on this aircraft, it's important to make sure that your um, throttle input is set to ground idle. You don't want to have it in the wrong position. Okay, so flight right condition lever in start, which is, let's get back into I think that will do it. It's kind of an awkward position to get it into. So let's hold that and start. And engine start right. Okay, monitor power plant parameters during acceleration to ground idle. ITT, NG, and NP. Right engine oil pressure, warning light off. So right now, we have the right engine oil pressure light is on. So that will, we're expecting that to go off. And we'll just monitor the instruments. Okay, now let's uh, remember where that switch is to start the right engine. Because it has been a while since I last did this. Where's the switch? Oh, there you go. Is that starting up? Doesn't look like it, does it? That's in normal. Okay, well, this doesn't look good. Okay, let's have a look. See, this is why I'm doing this to see how this works now, whether it's still. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, it's, it's just you've got to be careful with that. Uh, 
with a condition lever so that right engine oil pressure light should go out there you go bingo engine MP and we're waiting for engine instruments to stabilize ITT settling back down and that is looking reasonable ok our engine instruments are stable right engine reset on or right gen reset on yeah that looks stable to me right gen reset on right gen light should go off after a while it always takes a little while to go off there you go so it all looks good so far the aircraft is starting up ok the right generator the right generator is now powering the right generator bus the right main start bus is connected to the right battery bus left right avionics on right bleed valve as desired so we've got the, yeah we'll keep the bleeds on auto fight let's get reset it back to water, yep right HP valve as desired I think the idea is to keep those off until after takeoff, I might be wrong on that but I can't exactly remember when you turn those back on according to the self documentation I don't think it really matters, you could switch them in fact you could leave them on auto and I think it would still work but we're going to leave, it, leave them closed for the time being when avionic initialization is complete and we can check that yeah avionic in initialization is complete yeah there you well there you go now we're complete now we turn them off again I forget the exact reason for that there's a, there's a good reason to do it like that I forget the exact reason Ok, let's uh, start the left engine there you, can, you feel it just drop into that position Left condition lever start and we'll start the left engine and we see ITT rising and we'll see Engine MP So again just monitoring the instruments Making sure that everything is uh, as expected So far it's looking perfectly fine so as I, ex I um, experienced it before with the aircraft so I'm not seeing any no issues are really jumping out at me just watching the ITT stabilise and GNMP look fine temperature is kind of wavering a little bit starting to settle down it's getting close to settling now, I think we can take that as ready, it's pretty much settled down pretty much settled down now, so when engine instruments are stable, nav light is on on left gen reset and on
any second the light should go out, there you go, as well as the bus tie connect light. So the left generator is powering the left generator bus, the left main start bus is connected to the left battery bus. Let's get the left bleed reset and on, and again we're going to leave the left HP valve closed at this time. So let's check the hydraulics. And all in the green bands as expected. Not a problem. So we'll check the hydraulic quantity and pressure. Standby pito, which I think is up here. Standby, yeah, standby pito is now on. The light goes off. As you're going through it, you, you're getting all these lights turn off these caution lights if you will. Ice protection set checked. Do we need to? I don't think we do actually. Can't remember actually ever turning these off. I might be wrong but this concerns me that the lights are on but anyway. Set when OAT SAT is 5C or below with visible moisture present we're perfectly fine for that in this temperature. Auto coarsen is on. Where is auto coarsen again? There it is. Auto coarsen on, air conditioned pilot set checked. Looks good, I don't see any issues there. Let's get the recirculation fans switched on while we're up here. Yeah, that's the next thing to check. Left and right avionics. Down here, left and right heavy lights, let's switch these back on. Bus tie, yep, yeah, bus tie is uh, active. The bus tie connected light is extinguished as the left and right generator buses are not connected. Well, they're now connected, so we'll find there. Emergency. I always had issues with this because it wouldn't, sometimes it will not flip to the arm position until you lift the guard and then it works. Just really awkward. The emergency lights must be armed whenever the aircraft is moving under its own power. Trims set. Let's have a look at the trims. Yeah, you could... Uh, trims move a little bit slowly but you can a little bit of back um, trim in there. So the only light on now the, on the CWP is the parking brake advisory light for want of a better word. Fuel used, reset. Now this is an awkward one. I've, I, I must have said this before but this is a really... I've seen real world pilots struggling to do this. I've, on a um, kind of a training flight where the experienced, it's not the, the training pilot, but the actual experienced pilot doesn't know how to do this, and I've probably forgotten myself actually. There's a way of doing it, and I forget, so now I'm struggling to do it, there you go, you have to turn it and then push it. Altimeter set, well we'll just find a way to remember how to do that. There you go. Yeah, we'll just leave it to the line two. Standard. Navigation, we don't need to worry about that right now. We're not gonna We would. Uh, this would be the time we'd set up how we want the um, AP to function. I, I cover that in greater detail in the actual. Oh, what's going on on this display? That looks really strange. First time I've seen any sort of an issue.
looks a bit odd. I am using Vulcan, although I have to say I'm not seeing any real improvement with frames. I forget how to turn this off, it's been such a long time since I've uh, come at it from this uh, cold start position. Anyway, we're going to skip that. So as it is right now, let's uh, have a look at the externals. So we've got the aircraft started, which is the whole purpose of this video. Actually I have uh, parked aircraft, so maybe that's having an impact on frames, I don't know. Actually I've made the, uh, the mistake of not uh, pre-flighting the aircraft, as you can see. but. That's the whole purpose of this video, just to take a look at it with the uh, latest version of X-Plane 11. It powers up fine, I've not seen any issues with it. And as I explained during this video, if you do want more information on the startup, going right through from start to finish and explaining how all the elements of the aircraft work, then uh, feel free to look at the startup video for this R340. I really like this aircraft, I would fly a lot more if you could air start it, but as I've explained, I don't believe you can. I certainly couldn't uh, air start it previously. I would highly recommend it. Obviously, look into it in more detail to see if there are any other issues that have been reported with this aircraft in flight or an approach or whatever. Uh, but certainly, starting the aircraft, it functions uh, as I've experienced it before. I've not noticed anything really out of the ordinary. So on that level, it at least works to right up to this point. Whether you choose the Cavanardo or the LES depends on whether you're looking for uh, realism or, well, when I say realism, just more depth in systems or whether you just don't like the look of the LES version and, and uh, you like something that looks maybe a little bit more up to date. That will be your choice. I would choose this version of the aircraft of the two, but you know, your mileage may vary on that. So I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you found it useful and uh, as always feel free to like, comment and subscribe.